and uh, Vaughan, welcome. Thanks for joining us from the hot, sweltering low felt, dry low felt. And uh, we look forward very much to, to hearing and seeing what you've been up to recently. Over to you. Uh, thank you very, very much, Nick. Um, yeah, I'm just going to share a screen quickly and we can, uh, we can kick off there. Can everybody hopefully see the uh, black screen in front of you? That's right, great. so the last week has been uh, really hot and really dry. And like you were saying, it was, uh, it was a tough one. Um, but we, we managed to climb a lot of mountains and flip a lot of rocks and do a lot of searching for the Biobash week um, in the aim to get as many species as possible. So it was, yeah, it was a good challenge. Um, just a little bit of background about what we're doing when I say we, it's, it's myself and then um, I'm, I'm part of a, a school uh, called Bushwise Field Guides and we run a, a six month biodiversity course or a, a, we call it the wildlife research expedition. But we get a couple of students out that are, they, they don't necessarily have to be qualified in any particular field, but they can, they can come out and basically we teach them to go out and explore and to go and use different field techniques and, and go and find all the amazing creatures that are out there. So um, we've got many different venues within Limpopo. We do work up in the Sotpansberg. There's a quite a, um, a well-known nature reserve close to me, less than an hour away, called Lekalamet Nature Reserve. And that's our most favorite stomping grounds. I think top left there, you, you'd see the scenery is amazing. Um, and, and a huge biodiversity of all sorts of creatures up there. So we do a little bit of camera trapping for the mammal map and some butterfly collecting and moth lights, and flipping of rocks, looking for reptiles. It's, we try and be as like, cover all the possible projects that there are there. Um, this week, however, it's still, it's still winter out here. We haven't had our first rain yet, um, but we still managed to, to smash quite a few species. A couple of numbers that we managed to get for the week. If I put that into a graph, it looks a little bit different and a lot more understandable. Um, the first thing you'll notice is a very definite bias towards lepi map and uh, I'm quite an enthusiastic lepidopterist so that sort of rubs off to the students and they all get roped into to chasing butterflies and moths around the place. Um, but again we, we <laughs> actually aim for at least 500 species which, which sounds like a lot but we're a, a pretty hefty team of about nine uh, students plus myself, so it, it was a. Uh, it, it worked out that all of us just had to find nine or ten uh, butterflies and moths a day. Um, it was actually quite difficult because of the lack of rain and it was very dry. So and of course we're not only looking for butterflies and moths; we're looking for everything. Um, we did notice a, a distinct lack of the frogs and the beetles and these sort of these creatures that do rely on those first rains to fall before they start coming out. Um, if you look at those graphs, you see reptiles is also quite well done. Um, thanks to a lot of enthusiastic rock flipping and searching and all the little cracks and crevices. We were actually a lot, we were quite lucky to pull out quite a few of those ones. Um, but yeah, it was a, a good tough week's worth of work and we managed to to get quite a few um, submissions in. All of these have already been submitted and hopefully they'll form part of Liz's statistics. Um, for us, we, we're quite happy with, with what we were able to get to this, this week. Um, and then we found a couple of really interesting stuff during the week. And it all sort of boiled down to having a bunch of people really just having targets and turning it into a little bit of a competition. Whereas normally we'd go out and, and we, we're involved with quite a lot of different projects which are not half as intensive as this. Um, even that picture that you're looking at now, that's a little um, montane dwarf burying skink, uh, Scalotes myris. And that is supposed to be a Mapumalanga species and a, a specialist grassland species. You don't really find it anywhere else except for that escarpment grassland. And uh, we pulled quite a few out of the grasses up at Lechalometi, which is quite a bit further north. Um, there's so, so it's, it's in quite a few quarter degree squares north than what the other records in the, in the virtual museum are. So by hunting everything and everywhere, we actually came across some really, really cool stuff. Um, I'll start off with the butterflies. 
Uh, you've got that very, very pretty Paradise Skipper, the Abantus, um, as well as the, uh, the Charaxes Jalusa. Those, they, they're supposed to, they're, they're like super fresh and they're all on the wing in quite good numbers now. Also, again, despite the, the lack of rain, um, they're definitely out in really good numbers, which was for us really fun. Um, but again, having that target of 500 Lepidoptera for one week, um, it forced us to look at a lot of the different stuff as well as so if you see the bottom picture of that Eloides, um, that's a butterfly that most non lepidopterous people walk right past. They, they're not going to bother too much with a small little orange russet butterfly um, or, or the moths, for example. So having this challenge and having it have a little bit more competitive sort of forced everybody in the team to actually look at not only the big pretty Abantus, but also all the small little brown stuff as well. Um, so that, that was quite, quite fun. Obviously the big pretty stuff was a highlight for us because in the middle of winter, yeah, still, um, although it's spring, we sort of consider it winter until the first rain comes and the first new shoots start on the trees. And, uh, with as dry as it is, these little flashes of color are a, a super delight out there. Um, up next we had the reptiles and we found some really, really cool reptiles this last week. Uh, you've got that little berg adder that we got uh, on the top of the mountains as well. Also quite an interesting one because, uh, although it occurs throughout the whole of uh, South Africa along the escarpment there, we haven't really seen many of them at all during the actual summer months um, up at Lechlemeti. It's, it's, we did not even know that it occurred in that reserve until this last week when we were actively going out and chasing anything that had scales and getting photos and submitting those records that we actually discovered a lot of these little, little reptiles that we most probably just overlooked because um, it's probably been there all along. As well as a lot of the, the really cool but very common species We've got the black-headed centipede eaters, which everyone enjoys. And it's a tiny, tiny little snake. And as well as the yellow-throated plated lizards, they tend to, these, these two species get overlooked a lot because there's so many of them. Um, we, we get excited about them on the first week. And then after that, they sort of peter away. And I think what this bio bash really did for us is allowing us to, to sort of reset the tally and really go out and find even the most common reptile species again and go and log them and, and get nice photos for them. And then in hindsight, looking at the records, we don't get very many recent records of many of these, relatively speaking, common reptiles in this area. And, and so, yeah, the BioBash really did well for just updating all those, um, all those records. Uh, the spiders, which is a, a sort of a favorite, Although it conflicts a bit with the butterflies and the moths, uh, we found some really cool spiders. If you don't like spiders very much, this, this might be not for you. But the nice thing about that is that they are everywhere. Um, we, were, we were taking photos of spiders in the, the public toilets of the garage on the way to one of the venues. And they're just logging everything everywhere. And um, so we got this beautiful little Sultusidae, the, the jumping spiders absolutely everywhere the kite spiders in the forests and uh, it is yeah it was a good week of spider hunting as well again i think in the future it will be a little bit of a um, so the numbers will definitely be much better we did miss a lot of species which we expected to find during the week but just because of it being the very start of the season and very dry still we we missed a lot of those species um I'm not going to go through all the different records that we saw. Those were just the favorites. And then here's a, a, a one slide of, of just the little odds and ends. We've got this little breviceps, the uh, rain frog. Uh, this is quite an interesting record because we've, we've been looking at it and it's with the different photos we got, it looks a lot like a uh, breviceps sylvestris. We still need to send this off to a couple of the frog experts and then get a third and fourth and fifth opinion on it. Um, but that's the northern forest rain frog, whereas on the, in the place where we found this little one, we should only be getting the bush felt rain frog. So it might actually be a nice uh, distribution range expansion if it turns out to be the right species. Um, the dung beetles in particular were very, very bad. We did not get very many of them. Um, as typical in the low felt, that's usually most of the beetles are only going to come out after the rain. Even the fruit chafers are very, very 
few and far between. Um, however, the ant lions are amazing. They, they've been all over the place. And uh, we all tend to know those little pit building ant lions, and they were very easy to find. We found them by the dozens. Um, but this was quite a significant find. The, the bottom right there is a free roaming ant lion. So that one doesn't actually make a pit relies on that super camouflage that it's got and it just it's under stones and rocks and uh, it's sort of like a really really efficient ambush predator. Uh, we got some really good fungus as well which we did not expect. Um, our, our fungus tally was significantly high. Um, we sort of anticipated that in the middle of winter we're going to be uh, struggling on that one but we found quite a lot of them and probably my favorite for the whole week was these tiny little yellow ones. They are very, very, very small, and they're called ping pong bats. <laughs> it's a Favalacia species, I think, and uh, they're super, super tiny, and but ridiculously beautiful. And you can see why they're called little ping pong bats. Um, and then on the bird picks, we found quite a good number of different birds. Uh, the winters are very easy for us for the birding compared to the insects because there's the, the birds are much more attracted to the water that is available. Um, but up in the Lechlemetsi mountains, we did find a pair of cape vultures, which was super interesting. Um, we wouldn't have actually spotted or paid any attention to them if it wasn't a, a biobash week, because we'd be focusing on all the butterflies, obviously. But um, the, speaking to the reserve manager, they've actually not recorded cape vultures breeding there before. And we found this pair very, very close to one of the huge cliff faces that side. So it's uh, it sparked a lot of interest and we, we definitely going to be monitoring that site and seeing if we can't pick up a, a new breeding site for these cave vultures on that reserve. So that's super exciting. And uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up the, the week's fun that we had. It was um, quite hard work, but, but very, very rewarding in the end with some amazing, amazing biodiversity and species that we found. And um, Hopefully in the future, we're going to, after a little bit of rain, if we can have another biobash in a, in a month's time, the, the results we can predict are going to be even bigger and even better and the, the contributions even more. And that's pretty much it from my side, hey? Oh, fantastic. Uh, Vaughan, great stuff. Gee, lovely, stunning photographs and what diversity. Um, you know, it's, uh, this reminds me of the, uh, of the sort of, uh, bio bashes where we, where we can get together. Um, uh, reminds me very much of the, of the one that we had down in the Karoo in, in, in February and to just, uh, be able to have a group of people together all out searching for biodiversity, anything that moves. So, uh, thanks so much. And, um, Fantastic that you've got, uh, the, you know, the support and these, uh, the, this team of people who are all committed and keen. And of, of course, that probably takes quite a lot of arranging to get it all together. So well done for that. Uh, and tremendous, uh, you know, support for, for the cause, if we can put it that way. Keep up the excellent work. Um, we've, got, uh, we've got time for, for some questions, if there are any. Um, I haven't been checking. I saw that there, there were one or two questions uh, going on to the chat. I think the one that I saw, Vaughan, is do you photograph, do you try and photograph everything that you come across? Absolutely, yes. So, so most of the species, we try and photograph everything we can. Obviously, some of the stuff is harder than others. Um, it's, it's, quite, it's quite simple to photograph a, a, a snake or a lizard that's sort of sitting on a rock sunning itself in a, in a bit of a cool day. But uh, some of our butterflies and, and yeah, some of the creatures can be, can be super fast, in which case we would do a sort of a catch and release um, system. We would catch it, get a photo of it, and then it go again there. Um, and that, that sort of allows us to get uh, as maximum amount of photos out there. Um, but most of the stuff you don't even need to really collect. If you look at the fungus, it's pretty still. Um, the beetles, <laughs> if you, you find a good, a good elephant turd in the bush, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna be blessed with a whole lot of records. So yeah, but we do definitely try and we keep a, a really good log of all the diversity that we uh, that we collect. Um, it's not only the the virtual museum's databases. We've got a really good collection of flies, for example, and 
uh, Satonid beetles and a few of the other species which might not necessarily go to the virtual museums. But we still try and identify everything and sort of get a really good understanding of what is around us and when it is around us. Um, but for the, the projects on the virtual museum, it is, yeah, it's, it's really handy and of a great benefit to us as well because ultimately we're doing this to try and learn and find out what is on our backyard and what, what's, what's going on in, in the wilderness around us and not only contributing those things, but also getting that, that the information back and having it going to somewhere is, yeah, it's, it's, good, it's good stuff. Vaughan, Vaughan that, that a Leodes that you, that you photographed, was that the one that flies up on top of the downs where, where the Lepidocrysos latana fly? That's <coughs> right, yes. Uh, the the Triamini slash Swanopoli sort of uh, thing there. I think Graham's talking <laughs> rubbish. I think, I think that's Barbara. Um, you look at I'm gonna I'm gonna go back there quickly. Steve's talking about this bottom one, yeah, bottom right. You need to get his DNA. Has Jeremy got one for DNA? Must have. Um, I've looked. Uh, yeah, I've, I've actually I've got a, one or two of those specimens. I still need to send it off to him, and as 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 soon as we can get those things to him, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what pops out of that, because that's the, also it's it's not on a pick that. That was off a, off a slope, about halfway up there. And so, yeah, it, it, it'll be quite interesting. But for now, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a sort of a mix and match. Aloides, Aloides Spur. Yes. That's <laughs> a, one of those ones. One, one other thing, by the way, I was just, a, a, I was contacted by a VM contributor called Andre de Fris, Andres de Fris, uh, tonight. So he's been doing a lot of, lot of uh, biomapping around the, uh, in fact, he had one organized for earlier on this year around um, Swadini. And oh, right. some amazing stuff around there. And uh, I, I said to him, look, he's interested in getting involved. I'll put him in touch with Vaughan and Megan and uh, Alison Sharp and a few other guys around there. We need, we need to get a, a low felt Lepsock branch going if we haven't got one already. Um, and he, he, look, he looks like he could do some really good stuff there. He's in charge of one of the resorts there. So, yeah, I'll, I'll send that through. Absolutely, that would be fantastic. Yeah, that is a good venue. And there's a lot of good stuff in that canyon as well, which we're not seeing further north. If uh, uh, you've got this, you've got the area which we are operating in, so south of Tanin, going down that escarpment towards the um, sort of the mountain pass going through into the, into the low felt. And then you have that, that huge, huge canyon. And there's quite a few species across the board, not only Lepidoptera, but of, of all the things which we're finding south of that canyon, going further down Marupskops area, but we're not really finding it up north. So it would be very, very nice to get a comparison between the two places and to actually get access into those places and, and go and explore there as well. So yeah, I look forward to that. coalescence from there, which is bloody rare. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, brilliant. I know um, Andres is, uh, you know, um, he and uh, Joey, I think his wife, they, uh, they're retired and so they have time on their hands and they have a special arrangement um, with uh, Swadini Resort that they, you know, develop checklists and of, of everything there, trees and Odonata, Lepidoptera, everything. Um, so I think he's a, a good guy to get in touch with and I'm sure that he'd be keen to expand what it is that he's doing yeah i see there's another question that's just been posted um uh, from zandre is your field work only limited to limpopo or do you cover mpumalanga as well um at the moment i'm having problems with mpumalanga uh, uh that that's a whole different meeting right they're discussing permits and uh mm. yeah, getting getting to operate in, in mpumalanga so yeah, we've, we've got permits for Limpopo and for most of the provincial nature reserves in Limpopo to be able to do this research and, and go out and do these surveys because um, obviously a lot of these surveys can be a little bit invasive, like I say, catching and releasing butterflies and having caraxes traps up and that type of thing there. So even if we're not collecting insects per se, we still need all the, the permits and the, the sort of the CITES legislation behind it. Um, which which we've we've got a good thing going in in Limpopo, but Mapumalanga one day we'll definitely get there. 
Um, but for now, also logistically, we've got so, so, so much area that still needs covering in Limpopo that uh, Mapumalanga, it'll be very nice if we could, if we could set up a similar thing that side. Um, but at the moment, we've, we, we're operating the Sotbansberg. We've got a spot up at Venetia in Mapungubwe Nature Reserve. So pretty much the whole northern and eastern side of Limpopo is being covered at the moment. Um, this possibility for the Waterberg as well, for all the people in the center of, of Limpopo. Um, but yeah, at the moment, Mapumalanga, even though it is quite close to us, uh, we're talking about Swadini now, that's technically speaking, according to the permit, Swadini is, is sort of in, or at least Maripskop is in Mapumalanga. Um, so I don't actually have access and, and very much freedom that side. But it would, it would definitely be something that we'll be including in the future, for sure. Great. Thanks very much, Vaughan. I think we'll, we need to move on. Um, but a wonderful presentation and great to see uh, you know, that biomapping is uh, definitely alive and well in your neck of the woods. Keep up, keep up the excellent work. Great Rick, stuff. The, yes. There was, a, um, there was a, a question asking, and I had the, qu the same question. What, what was the, the animal on the last, on the last slide? <laughs> what is that? It's, a, it's, a, it's a super macro photo of a crane fly. Oh, okay. <laughs> a really, really good cool fly. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. That's, that's <laughs> great. Thanks, Vaughan. Thanks very much. <laughs>